can't believe we finally made it. We actually had our show in a couple of weeks. I know, but I haven't really made it yet. Oh, come on, Eileen. <laughs> I still have these large paintings that I'm trying desperately to, re to resolve. Anyway, I feel like, you know, the show's coming up and, you know, I'm in good shape, but I feel like the more time I have, it's the longer uh, the longer I procrastinate in the sense that I go in every day and I work, but I tend to play and experiment a lot, and I have trouble sort of saying, hey, you know, you have to actually get this work done, you know, before the exhibit. And um, so the closer the deadline gets, the more it pushes me to be decisive. And we visit back and forth a lot, almost every day. Yeah. We look at what, what we're doing, what the progress has been, you know, get, get thoughts. I mean, I was always running down, the beginning I was running down to the studio all the time with these big prints I was doing, I wasn't really working, but I'd make the track down to her studio. I would say it's more about verbalizing the, the process that you're in and maybe getting some you know, some feedback that is positive, more than negative, in the sense that trying to build on what, what is working, um, as opposed to, oh, I don't like this, or I don't like that. I feel like I was giving Linda anxiety, because she kept coming down, and she'd see a whole new painting every time she entered the studio. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, was that, the, now, was that, which one was that? Like, hard to know, <laughs> you know. Hey. I'd be like, oh yeah, that one's, that one's, that one's under there and completely gone. <laughs> and I have to say, your feedback, although it was very positive, I did take some real drastic turns after talking with you. Yeah. So you, would, you would say, I mean, you were very positive about it, but... I, I, I knew immediately I was on a dead end yeah. after we had our conversation. Yes. So, yes. And that was really helpful because I was really beginning from scratch. Yeah. Looking through a lot of tender yeah. 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 So it was very helpful actually to really get to that end and just, just start over. Well, what I thought was interesting about Linda's work is that she's a photographer, but she's moving more towards. Uh, a painterly kind of process, which I was able to help with more. That, you know, I, uh, you know, before with photography, I could, you know, say, yeah, I love the subject, or, you know, and I, I understand the grayscale and all of that, but I don't think I had as much to, to, to add, whereas this process that she's using now has a lot of layering, and for me, that began to be something I felt like I could I could hang out with more. There's definitely rules to art, but there's also a lot of openness to it. And within that open space, you can enjoy it or you can struggle. Uh, and, and I think there's both. There's the time when you're playing and you're enjoying it, but then things aren't working out and you're like, wow, you know, I have to solve this problem. No one's going to help you really solve that problem. And it, it forces you to use a lot of your your skills um, as a human being in general. I think what's really challenging for me is beginning with an idea or concept. Like I had this idea of working with possessions. But I was thinking of it in both a literal and a figurative sense. You know, so these were objects that had um, come down to me through the family, through generations of the family. And I held on to them, thinking that maybe someday I'd do something with them, you know, from an artistic point of view, and you know, just, just kind of held on to them. And so now I've had the time to work with these objects, so I had this idea of this of the kind of session. And it was very challenging to um, to translate that concept into a, an original art form. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, I didn't want to just photograph the object yes. as an object. Yeah. So I wanted to somehow capture this idea of the, the essence of the object and the spirit of the object. Mm -hmm. And also the interplay of various layers of objects and what that meant. Because these were multiple generations. These these things had belonged to multiple generations and had passed on from generation to generation. I understand. I think we can all relate to things that we get from our families. Um, you know, in many ways, not just objects. Um, and those things become, you know, part of us, they possess us. And I think it is part of our life's path to try to break free of those things in some ways. You know, not just the objects, but the, the things that we inherit that 
are out of our control, you know, behaviors, you know, patterns and things like that. I think we have a common interest in exploring the layers of meaning and to the interplay between different uh, layers of, of what, what it is we're trying to depict. Yes, so, that's true. You know, you're, you're, you're working abstractly, but you're also very interested in the interlocking spaces and the spatial relationships yes. between the shapes that you're working with and the colors. And in many ways, I'm working with the whole concept of layers. I actually think there's a lot of commonality in what we're trying to do, even though the work looks very really different. Yeah, I, uh, I, I would agree with that. The thing that I'm learning more uh, that has been very difficult for me is to stop painting so much and sit back and look until you really see some of the relationships that are meaningful. And how they relate to you, um, and I think that that has been really difficult because I find that like if I just keep working really hard, I'm going to find what I want to find, and but that isn't that isn't um, that can be very exhausting and work really hard, but yet not get where you want to go. So you know. I'm learning after many years of this process that you can't always get there by just painting. You have to pull back and, and, and really give yourself some space and time to recognize the relationships that are happening. Well, uh, during the last five or six months while I've been working on these images, I realized when I first started out, I thought, I want to work with really bright colors. And I want to do this sort of overlapping in space and, um, you know, and I think I achieved that somewhat in, in my collages. But in the large paintings, what I realized is I don't think that's really my sensibility. And, and the idea that you want to try something is important because I think it's important to push your boundaries. But I think I came to this point where I realized that's not me. Um, that doesn't that doesn't express my sensibilities, like who I am. And I think it was hard for me because I want to make these big bold statements, and you know. But then I think, well, you know, maybe you're not about like some big bold statement. You're more about something a little more subtle and more, uh, I don't know, a gentler kind of approach. And, you know, learning to, to, to love that about yourself is, is uh, it's a process. I actually began experimenting with different um, solutions. And I actually made a mistake and uh, used a solution that wasn't intended to be used box in a different kind of film, and as I pulled off the transfer, a lot of the, the image came off, but the, the, the box was very distressed looking, and it looked like an old wall, and I was like, hey, maybe this is something I've ever worked with. So it was actually a mistake that happened that was just not really there, and it sort of set me off on that path of creating these distressed painted surfaces that I could then transfer in photographs. So that, that, and that, that was the beginning of the yeah. I have learned a lot from Linda. Um, you know, she's very grounded. Um, she's one of my dearest friends. And um, I think we really connect because of that. And, um, you know, maybe Linda, you know, is looking to me for you know, a less guarded, more spontaneous response to things. Um, and I'm looking to her for uh, maybe a little more structure. I don't know. I don't know much about painting at all. I've dabbled a little bit. You know, and I'm learning more, actually learning a lot, you know, from you. And I sometimes describe what I'm trying to do in these boxes is the painting in reverse. I'm putting an image on the surface and then I'm rubbing it off in yes. a way. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I don't know if it helps or not, but sometimes because I don't know a lot about painting, I can just walk in and just take a look at what you're doing. And yes. 
you just say, look, I, I think you need some dark here. Or yes, like, absolutely. You know, I, I can look at the overall structure, mm -hmm. you know, in a way because I'm not in I hope that the way that I paint is the, the way that I read an abstract painting is that I am making you use your imagination. I'm giving you um, clues in, in, in the way that things are arranged uh, for you to play with. To say, oh, you know, I wonder why that is there. Or when, you know, my first experience with abstract painting, I was, you know, probably in my late teens and I can remember thinking, oh, I love that, but I don't even know why. Um, and it all feels right, you know, um, and I love the mystery of it, you know, and I think that has always been the, the draw. And I hope, you know, uh, I like, I mean, I love pattern, it's one of my favorite things, and I always think of pattern as like something that is, is um, something metaphorical in terms of family, uh, you know, your familial um, patterns that you take on and you're trying to break or you're, or they're good patterns. They could be good, they could be negative. And then I also see it as a interior quality, like a rug or a pillow or something that kind of uh, reminds us of home. Uh, so I bring a lot of my, like, my family uh, experiences, my childhood experiences into these paintings, but they're just hints. And so you can read those the way that you want. You can see them formally, you can see them uh, in any way that you choose. And I, and I hope that it, it makes you use your imagination. Although my work is pretty personal in the show, I'm hoping that somehow people see something personal in it. Just that they'll recognize something that's familiar and meaningful to them. And that's really all.